The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 7th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, We've got your back. You can send me an email. Fire that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger <clears throat> Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we begin our day with the mixed bag. The mix is coming from the Dow, which is up 29 points. Traders are up 43 cents. The other U.S. indices trading to the downside. You've got the S&P off four points. NASDAQ 125. Russell's down 14. Semi's off 27. You've got gold that's off 59 bucks. Silver's down a buck 60. Lights recruit up 29 cents. Trading up into resistance, the top of its profile. Natural gas up nine pennies. Trading out at 292. That wants to rally further. 297, I believe, is the number. 30-year Treasury down two points, print out 117.18. Our leaders in the clubhouse. To the upside, MicroStrategy, 46 bucks. Eli Lilly, 11 bucks. United Rentals, 11. Air Products Chemicals up 10. Argon Inc. is up 7. That's a 10% move there. To the downside, it's Vale Resorts off 27 bucks or 13%. NVIDIA down 21 bucks, down uh, 1 and 7 tenths percent. Asmill Holdings, 17 to the downside. Logistic Properties, 15. Uh, Eponema. I-M-P-I-N-J. It's down 14 bucks. It's an 8% move to the downside. And Sherwin-Williams getting in on the game. Penny the Town Red off $13.47, off 4.43%. So what do we want to look at to begin our day? I tell you what, we can begin to stand on this, this page right here for a moment. We still have that advanced client oscillator that is below that zero threshold level. That is signaling to you and I that uh, sellers should be the ones that are in control. Uh, when we take a look at the spot volatility, it's still below its 50-day exponential moving average. we got that parabolic SAR dot that moved up to the top. This suggests that we should see the spot volatility continue to move lower out there. And if that's the case, then we should see a rally inside of the S&P 500. Let's move off of this set of charts and start breaking it down by taking a look at what's going on on the intraday time frame for the ES Mini. We'll take a look at the Yes, we'll take a look at the Dow. We will take a look at the NQ. Here we can see, so we got a little timeout message, a little 10-minute TD9 count top. That took place at 10.50 this morning. That was a bar following bar number nine. Now price is back, is pulling back to support. So it's got two support levels under where we're trading right now. The first one would be 53.55. If that does not hold, then we should see it move down to 53.41. Along the bottom row of charts, it is only the 10-minute that had a topping signal. But along the top row of charts, all of them, with the exception being the ES Mini for its daily time frame. We've got a TD9 count top that's in place for the um, for the five-hour time frame chart. Price is trading into its buy zone. It's trading right now above its oscillator and change line by a smidgen. But a smidgen is all it needs to suggest that it may want to move up to the 53.72 level. If we take a look at the 240-minute time frame chart, it has both a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profile. Only a close below 53.39 would signal a lower price. On a two-hour time frame chart, 
It has a TD9 count top. It has a Wave 7 top. It's got a Rhodes Metamindicator top. Gee, sounds pretty toppy to me. It doesn't matter whether you've got one top or two tops or three tops. One top is enough. What Price is doing here is consolidating with inside its profile. The spike to the downside this morning found support at that 53.33 level. That's a bullish structured profile. Its buy zone is between that 53.33 and 53.46 area. So we've got tops. We've got uh, levels of support that have held out there. Sounds to me like a good old-fashioned type of consolidation out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES Mini. The ES Mini has been trading higher for four sessions. Uh, if we take a look at this out here, four consecutive sessions to the upside. So to see a one-day, two-day move to the downside would be normal. Yesterday was actually the first day to the downside. So it could actually just simply be a two-bar move, which is pretty normal. If you take a look at the dance steps up here, the last two moves to the downside before we saw a rally of at least a couple of days out there was a two-bar move. So I'd expect that, in fact, if we do see the ES Mini close lower today, that it likely trades higher come Monday. That's what's going on with it. Let's go take a look at the NQ. Let's get that up on our screen, see what kind of signals it has out there. I don't recall off the top of my head if they are the same as the ES Mini. And I'm referring to the top of the board, the five-hour, the four-hour, and the two-hour time frame. But soon enough, we're going to figure that out here. I see a TD9 count top. On the five-hour time frame chart, price consolidated with inside its profile, 18,996 to 19,124. I see a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top for the 240-minute chart. A new profile has formed here. Price found support at the uh, bottom of that profile at 19,022, resistance 19,126. If we look at the two-hour time frame chart, really the same set of signals out there. A number of roads meant to indicator tops, TD9 count top. Again, here we had price pull back. It made uh, it made a bottom in the buy zone on the two-hour time frame chart between 18.924 and 18.986. <clears throat> I don't see the same 10-minute topping signal we saw in the ES Mini. So those of you that are signal traders out there, I would keep my eyes glued to the ES Mini for signals because it appears to be generating better signals, uh, at least intraday, shorter term time frame than the NQ. Now let's go take a look at the Dow, which has decided to join the party in its move to the upside. At least it, uh, that's what the signal was a while ago. We'll come back and take a look at why Stevie said that. But first, well, well, the why I said it was because price was trading above that oscillator and change line. It is not at the moment. That's a level that we want to watch. What is that level, Steve-O? That level for today is going to be 39001 If price is able to close above that, that would suggest a rally towards 40 034 At this stage here, key level of resistance has held, and that is that daily oscillator and change line. We see the 10 minute Dow equity future contract was also joining the ES mini on its 10 minute basis when it formed that TD9 count top. Its levels of support to, to the downside should it continue to move to the downside 38,934, 38,865, and then finally be 38,794. Along the top portion of this screen out here, what do we have? We have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top with price finding support on a two-hour time frame chart at the bottom of its profile, 38.869. On a 240-minute time frame chart, and this is bullish, so price spikes up, runs right into its TD9 count breakdown level, 39.177, remains above its uh, profile, remains above its green oscillator and change line. Looks to me like it wants to make another run for that 39.177 level out there. Uh, same pattern, really, on the five-hour time frame chart. The difference is the color of the oscillator and change line. Here we can see that price spiked up, found resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag out there. The train is up 15, Dow is up 44. My sincere gratitude to each of the dinners that have reached out to me, offering me uh, different uh, solutions for this uh, cold that came on pretty quickly. And I've been fighting. I've been utilizing uh, some of those uh, techniques. Uh, some of the other stuff is on order and actually arrives today. So uh, we've got an extraordinary, talented group of an uh, knowledgeable group of uh, folks inside the Tiger's Den. We ought to start a TFNN-MD program out there. But uh, I'm sincerely grateful for uh, uh, all the uh, help that each of you have uh, provided. Let's get back to the charts out here. We're going to take a look at Accenture. This is for Arthur. Uh, Arthur is, uh, I believe he is long Accenture. And so what you're watching for, so you got a daily bottom pattern out here, Art. And that happened a couple of days ago. That was, it uh, looks like it was on a Tuesday when a nice bullish engulfing candle formed. It was on June the 4th out there. That confirmed what I refer to as a rose momentum indicator bottom. Price is trading with inside a bullish structure profile. Uh, yesterday, price made a high of about 293.87. Its actual resistance level and battle that you should be watching to the upside will be 292.84. To the downside, what you should be watching is the low that came in. This also formed what I refer to as a wave seven bottom. That was on May 31st. If price were to close below that low, that's at 278.69, be fair for a further move lower out there. Now, what you'd really love to see take place today is on Friday. Now, this top with what's referred to as a TD9 count top. That was back on a weekly basis on March the 8th. This formed a, a this did not form a TD nine count bottom, so we never got that same type of bottom. You'll see number nine and bar number about following that out there, but the low of that pattern, just like the high of the pattern, needs to occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So it have any kind of a bottom signal, but it can be a bottom pulling back to support. And so the number that you're watching today is 289.66. We saw price slice below that last week. What Stevie requires is two bars below support or two bars above resistance, at least to give us a more solid type signal. Not that those can't fail, but at least we don't really like one hit wonders. And right now, uh, price is trading above that 289.66 level. So if we can close above that, 
Then I'd watch that 294.84 level. On a monthly time frame, we can see the price is pulled back to a trend line level of support out there. So you're looking for a close above 294.84 to then suggest that price over time wants to make a move up to 316.21. Again, you close below the lows of uh, May, May 31st out there. This is headed lower. If that happens, you know, write back to me or get back in touch and we'll be happy to take a look at that. So that is Accenture, ticker symbol ACN. That's from Art in Boca Raton. Let's take a look at Carvana. CVNA is a ticker symbol. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan went ahead and shorted this this morning at a spike high. Now, when it was doing at that spike high, Dan, it was testing that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 110.63. Price pulled back, didn't get all the way down to it, but Carvana has a bullish structured profile. The buy zone is between 99.07 and 102.12. The low so far this morning was down at 102.61. What I'd be watching for is if price closes above 110.64. Now, that number's going to change. <coughs> I don't know if it's 65, 66, 67. <coughs> I believe you might have an oscillator and change line on your system. And if you do, if price closes above that, well, then the daily chart says I want to head higher. And the head higher level would be 120.92. The weekly chart on its pullback last week closed below the green oscillator and change line. This week, we're back above it. Again, that looks like at this stage here, that might have been a one-hit wonder. That is a bullish signal. We don't have any kind of a topping pattern on the weekly basis for Carvana. On the monthly basis, we don't have any kind of a topping pattern. Price here is above profile levels, and it's above its oscillator and change on as well. So the key number, I get the short at the 110.60-ish type area because that daily green oscillator and change line. But at this stage here, you're trading above profile so it makes that a little bit suspect. It would really be suspect with a close above 110.62. Let's take a peek at some of the intraday charts out here, see what we can find. Now, that's a five-minute chart. We don't use that too often, but let's take a look at maybe a 30-minute chart and see what kind of signals we have out here for Carvana. Uh, what do I have for 30 minutes? All that I really have is really not much. Price uh, this morning here when it pulled back, didn't really do much. You've got a new profile. Price here is above its profiles as well as its green oscillator and change line. The 30-minute chart is suggesting to run for the high at 1030 this morning out there. Uh, let's take a quick peek at a 65-minute time frame chart. And again, folks, I use 30, 65, 130, and 195 because it takes the bars. And I love bars, by the way. And it, uh, just kidding. And it, uh, what it does is we have equal time frames. So that's why for cash instruments, uh, you want to use uh, whatever time period you use. My suggestion is make sure they're equally timed, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 65, 65, that make up the entire session out there. Here on a 65-minute time frame chart, it's bullish as can be. Price is traded above a breakdown area. It's traded above profile, traded above its green oscillator and change line. So um, I'd watch that green oscillator and change line for the day. You overcome that, and it looks to me like Carvana would be signaling it wants to move higher. So I hope that helps you out. At least keep an eye on some important levels out there. And thank you, as always, for your request. G-Man is up next. G-Man would like to take a look at a few things. Google, Amazon, Lightspeed, Crude, and we're going to do that. If we take a look at Google out here, Google is trading above <coughs> profile resistance, but below its uh, oscillator and change line at the uh, 179.73 level. I don't see anything wrong uh, with uh, Google. It looks to me like it wants to make its move up. Towards 179.73, maybe even take that out. On a weekly time frame, it has a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top would be negated this week if Google were to close above 177.50. We're trading right now at 178.20. So watch that 177.50 level, G-Man, because if price closes above that, it suggests it wants to move higher, which is exactly what the monthly time frame chart is showing you and I as uh, price is trading above profile and its green oscillator and change line. So googly. Looks very bullish to Stevie out there. Hope that helps you out on that review. I know you're also long Amazon. A-M-Z-N is a ticker symbol. Excuse me, folks, while I grab a little swig of water here with that throat. We're trying not to cough today. <clears throat> Big improvements overnight. So let's uh, keep it up, and maybe I'll even get in a game of golf this weekend. Who knows? It's not high on the priority list, but it sure would be nice. As we take a look at Amazon, you've got calls in this, I believe. Stay in those calls. Amazon on a daily time frame closed above the top of its profile yesterday. Uh, it's traded above yesterday's high. Never got down to yesterday's low. It did this morning test the top of that daily profile. Old resistance now becoming new support. That's at 183.67. 
What Amazon should do is target 189.89. The weekly time frame chart, prices trade above the top of its bear structured profile. It closed above 182. <coughs> there goes the cough. 182.45 today should get you up to 188.59. That number is going to change as price rallies. So that 189 area seems like a very good target. And the monthly basis for Amazon, well, did it form a sell the D point pattern? Let's try to go find that out. Let's go ahead and paint that in here. We'll go from the A to B or close to it. Move this line over to the C point. I'm not being dead on balls accurate here. Uh, from a uh, very famous movie, My Cousin Vinny. And the answer is it did. So this formed a bearish engulfing candle uh, the uh, week of April 24th out there. Uh, April 20. How oh, monthly? April uh, monthly sell the D point pattern. But price is still above oscillator, change, unchanged line, above its profiles. Its signal is neutral. But if you ever see Amazon, which you probably will, close above 189.77, the monthly chart would get back to its. Um, very bullish waves. Right now, I'd say the monthly chart is neutral. Weekly chart is bullish. The same with the daily. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, Lightspeed Crew, the July contract out here. This is for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. Now, if we take a look at Lightspeed Crew, it formed to buy the D-Point bottom a few days ago, back on the trading day of June the 5th, when it formed that bullish engulfing candle. It formed a bottom. All that really tells us is that price should get up to uh, test resistance levels. Well, that's what transpired yesterday and this morning. <clears throat> yesterday, price got all the way up to the top of that profile at 75.74. Today, we saw price test both the top of the profile as well as that red oscillator and change line. Red oscillator and change line tells us that we have a falling price oscillator. And when price is below that, uh, we have a, uh, we've got a falling price oscillator below zero. When price is below that, we it, it is a bearish condition out there. Now, I say that's a bearish condition. Price might close above that today, change that to a bullish position out there. But right now, we go with what we have. Lights Recruit has rallied into resistance. So what's going on on the intraday charts? Turns out there's a couple of topping signals out there. If we take a look at the 60 and the 30-minute time frame chart, both of those have roads meant to indicator tops. Now, the 60-minute is testing. Let me just open up the chart out here. It's testing profile support. It's a buy zone, meaning it's a bullish structured profile. Let's try to do this one more time out here. Just trying to stretch it out, not move it. There we go. <clears throat> now, we take a look at this here. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Uh, that uh, formed right here at uh, 9 o'clock this morning. Price is testing that key level of support, the bullish structured buy zone, between 75.42 and 75.60. If we see a close below 75.42, so far that's held the support, then we're likely going to get back to the 30-minute TD9 count bottom that formed. Let's take a look at that. And that formed out here was on bar number eight. This was at 5.30 in the morning, back on, well, that was this morning, June the, uh, June the uh, uh, 7th. Yeah, I believe it's June the 7th. So there's your bottom that came in. Uh, that's why price went ahead and moved higher out there. At least that's the best way that I can describe it for you. And then it ran into the resistance that we looked at on that daily time frame. Uh, so here, if price were to close below that weekly level we're looking at, I would say it would make a run for that TD9 count bottom. That's at 75 and a quarter, 75.24 to be exact. If price closed below that, something else is going on. What would that something else be? Well, I'd come back to the daily time frame. And at that stage, I'd say if you're going to close or go test that, if you close below that, then on a daily basis, price would be getting back to its buy zone. And the buy zone is between 73.29 and 74.11. Along the top row out here, we have a wave number seven top that may be triggered here within a few hours. We do have a TD9 count top on the five-hour time frame chart, and price is trading inside a bearish structured uh, five-hour time frame profile. So as we take a look at this, this would suggest that if price were to close on a five-hour time frame, the first one or the only one for the day that's going to come up is at 2 p.m., and that would mean a close below 75.51. That would be signaling its intent to move back towards 74.27. But since I believe the numbers were a little bit lower on the 30 and 60 minute time frame charts, I'd utilize those and then you could shift over to the five hour time frame chart. So, uh, G Man, I hope that uh, gives you a, a decent analysis of what Light Street Crew did, why it did what it did, and what it is uh, doing right now. If, and if that wasn't confusing, stick around because I'll confuse you even a little bit more. We had a request from Pete G inside the Tiger's Den. Would like to take a look at ticker symbol SILJ. SILJ is, drum roll please, it is Amplify, an Amplify Junior Silver Miners ETF. So in this case here, this is now trading below, trading below, it looks to me, first let's just get to the chase here. Let's cut to the chase. And it looks like this wants to chase down to 1130. That would be its TD9 count breakdown uh, level out here. This did yesterday. It looks like it formed a buy the D point pattern, but that was immediately negated out there. There's weekly support at 1149. 1149 is a weekly oscillator and change line. Now, it could be <coughs> that at day's end, price closes back above 1166. 1166 is the top of its weekly profile. If it can close above that, then a key area of support will have held. If it closes below that, that suggests run to 1149. We got 1130 on the daily time frame. And the monthly time frame, there's nothing wrong with it. It's trading above profiles, sausage, and change line. Um, so at this stage now, in a 15 minute time frame, here's an interesting time frame that you can uh, take a look at, Peak. And that is uh, because it's in a uh, Peak G mode. No, just gets it, that, it does show that on my screen, but that's not the case. What it did form is a TD9 count bottom. 
In the low of that pattern out here on a 10 minute basis, 1160. The next one forms at about four and a half minutes out there. If price closes below 1160, this tells you that SILJ wants to move lower, at least for the 15 minute time frame, but that'll bleed into the other time frames as well out there. Speaking of other time frames, what do you have out here for a 30 minute <coughs> chart? Let's take a look at it. 30 minute chart uh, doesn't look good at all. So it's, uh, I'd watch that, uh, what was it, 10 minute or 15 minute that we were looking at. <coughs> but 11.30 looks like it's a totally <coughs> game for those junior silver miners out there. Peak, hope that helps you out. Might not help you out if it's moving lower, but at least you know where it's gunning for. Let's go take a look at the energy transfer. This is for uh, Mark P. inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, Mark, if we take a look at energy transfers out here, it looks to me like this formed a buy the D point pattern back in the trade day of June the 4th. It was that bullish hammer candle that formed. It was more than a one to one. A to B equals CD pattern. Let's draw in the A to B point out there. If we move this over to the highest high that forms after that, you'll see more than a one to one A to B equals CD. So this has formed along the way a couple of buy the D point uh, patterns out there. Well, another one formed out here on June the 4th. Now we have price that is inside its bullish structured profile. It closed today about 1548, should run us up to 1557 to 1565. What you're really looking for here. As it closed about 1565, two closes about 1565. Why is that important? Because that's the top of the daily profile. Once you do the close above that, then you'd have a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern along with a profile change in trend. Weekly time frame, which you'd love to see this do at day's end, although it doesn't have to do that today, but you'd sure like to see this close above 1554. 1554 is the bottom of the weekly profile. Now here, on a weekly basis, you could actually get a weekly Gartley buy pattern. It's got the same A to B equals CD pattern, or at least I believe that it does. Here's your A point to your B point. Well, I didn't get it all the way down there. Let's stretch it a bad. And then we take, well, that didn't work. Let's try stretching this like this way. There we go. Now let's take this over to that uh, C point, the next tie that formed, which was on the next week, the next bar. So now this is, now that did not form a by the D point. But this week could, it just depends what the candle looks like at four o'clock this afternoon. So I would look at that. I would see if you got a bullish reversal candle, such as the hammer candle. And if you do, boy, then that's looking pretty good for energy transfer. <coughs> Doesn't mean that you don't have battles to 1557, 1565, because you would. But what you're looking for here are some nice solid bottoms. By the way, on the monthly time frame, all you need to see out here is a close above 1581. And if you get a close above 1581 and the gates is TD9 count top out there, and then you're off to the races to the upside. So, Mark P., I hope that helps you out. Thanks for the request. As always, we come back from this break. We're going to go take a look at Owl. We're going to go and then uh, HBM. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the ticker symbol HBM. That is a uh, hard, I'm sorry, Hud Bay Minerals. This is for uh, Sharky inside the Tiger's Den. So we take a look at this chart out here. We can see that this formed a rogementum indicator top. It did it on the trading day. It completed that or confirmed that pattern on May 22nd when price gapped to the downside. We have a new profile that formed yesterday. It's above price. That is a bearish uh, signal. Doesn't mean that price can't rally up into it. If it were to rally up into it, your resistance zone would be between 962 and 975. But that's not what we have right now. We actually have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. The B point which would be the trading day of May 23rd, had volume of 6.5 million shares. It was passed with 5 million shares, passed with 3 million shares. So it's kind of like a Gartley, uh, potentially Gartley, uh, Tiger Gartley is the uh, name that I was coming up with there. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong uh, stroke. So let's take a look at that A to B equals CD pattern, get a feel for what its initial price projection area is out there. We may have already hit it. There we go. And so we've gotten to the one-to-one -one level. What we don't have is a bullish reversal candle. So what I'd be watching for on HBM is a bullish reversal candle. What price might be doing, it might be targeting the 825 level. 825 is its breakout area. We're below support. We're below an oscillator and change line. We've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside out there. That suggests lower price. Now, it's trading into that swing point that formed back here on June the 4th. Volume there was 4.9 million shares. Today, so far, 700,000 shares. So it's moving into that level with some lighter volume out there. But it's moving lower. <clears throat> what could save a uh, further move lower out here would be the weekly chart. Now, we take a look at the weekly. What do we see? We see that at 890 is a green oscillator and change line. I don't see a topping pattern out here. I just see price trading with inside his profile. Profile is resistant at 1049. Support between 760 and 824. But price ain't going to get down there unless it can close below a green oscillator and change line. Green oscillator and change line tells the price oscillator is above zero <coughs> out here. <coughs> and when it is above a green line, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. So. On the week, the daily chart says, yeah, I got the A to B equals CD. It hasn't been confirmed. What's holding this up right now is that weekly level. Watch that 890 area. On the monthly time frame, too early to make a call as to what might be going on there. So nothing really to be paying attention to. Um, so I hope that and now if 890 gives way, then you're back to 825. So that's what I see, Sharky, when it comes to HBM. That was HUD Bay Minerals out there. Hope that helped you out. Dude inside the Tigers then would like to take a look at he's he's having a hoot with the ticker symbol OWL. And we take a look at it. Today's going to become bar number six of a TD9 count. Perhaps this forms a TD9 count bottom sometime next week. While it's doing that, it wants to go target the 1563 level. Dude, 
I am not saying it's going to get to 1563. I'm saying that's its next level of support. Price is taken out. It did this yesterday, a TD9 count bottom pattern. That was from the day of March the 18th. That swing point, by the way, had volume of 2.2 million shares. Yesterday, this did 8.2 million shares to the downside. Now, there's no A to B equals CD pattern out here. There was a cons potential consolidation pattern, but we don't even need to deal with that as we speak right now. Price is going to go target that 1563 level. If it does that, you could get a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom could form between Tuesday and Friday of next week. Weekly time frame chart supports the idea of a further move lower. We're trading below profile support at 1740 out there. Where would be the next area? We gave you 1563 for the daily time frame. <coughs> the monthly shows support or potential support at 1599. 1599 is the top of a profile that formed last month below price. Basically a bullish statement out there, but that doesn't mean that price can't pull back to test that level. And right now, based upon the daily and the weekly charts, that is certainly a game open at that 1599 area. So with regard to OWL, it looks like you're going to get a little bit more pain out there, but maybe you get a TD9 count bottom to save the day. That was the last bottom that formed out here, again, on the trading day of March the 18th. So if that helps you out, dude, McGuppy would like to take a look at Verizon. VZ is the ticker symbol out there. And he's looking at this more from a longer-term standpoint. So from a longer-term standpoint, you have that nice Roachmentum indicator bottom, October of 2023. And now price is trading with inside a profile that has support, down all the way at 3147 the center is at 3811 and the top which was tested last month is 4342 so what do we have here i don't have a i don't have a topping pattern just have a consolidation um on the monthly time frame let's keep moving sideways let's go look at the weekly <clears throat> on the weekly chart i don't see a topping pattern i see a consolidation pattern that is for sure so that one's easy to spot let's just simply Slide this over. Let's draw in that consolidation. Let's get our rectangle tool out there because for this we can ident identify, right, from the attorney in My Cousin Vinny. Um, what a great movie that was. And uh, let me just slide this over just to you. <coughs> you can see the, the basic consolidation area. We could probably even move it lower out there. Probably that's a better consolidation. Now, what you'd love to see, so... If this can close above on a weekly basis, it doesn't have to be today, but if it were today, you know, you'd like that. That close above 4128. 4128 or 4124 is the top of the weekly profile. If you close above the profile level on a weekly basis and you're above the green offset and chain sign, that would suggest that price goes and targets the top of that consolidation and the 43 level. 4244 is a TD9 count breakdown. So you're going to have a battle, first battle to the upside would be 4172. That's the top of your daily profile. To the downside, support would be at 4063. So those are the levels to be watching for you, which would be an intraday trade, which would be the daily time frame because you're more looking at this from a longer term time period. So <coughs> consolidation on the weekly, basically a consolidation on the monthly and the uh, uh, daily no topping pattern to consolidation with inside his profiles. Those are the areas that I'd be watching, McGuppy. Hope that helps you out with regard to Verizon. But McGuppy doesn't want to stop right there. McGupp McGuppy would like to take a look at AT&T, T being the ticker symbol out here. Let's go figure out what it is doing. Daily time frame chart shows what? <clears throat> Shows a consolidation with his side, its profile that is for me today. That level is between 1778 as support and 1845 as resistance. I don't see a topping pattern. I just see a consolidation. Odds favor, this makes a move up to the 1845 level. The weekly time frame chart looks good. It's trading above profile, a green oscillator and change line. Its next resistance, well, did this form an A to B equal CD pattern? No, it didn't to the upside. I didn't confirm that. I don't think. I'm looking at the candle from the week of April, uh, February the uh, 2nd, which had volume of 251 million shares. Last week, as price was moving into it, 149. Now, the high of that candle, which was a wave seven top, the high of that was 1816. Where did we close last week? 1822. So this actually has triggered an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Hasn't done it with volume, but it has triggered that pattern on a weekly basis. And last week was a short week. This week, we're at 131 million shares. Um, does it need to be above 251? That was already taken care of. Oh, I take that back. It was 149 million last week out there. So certainly not confirmed with volume, but it is confirmed with price. 
I would say at a minimum what AT&T is telling us is it wants to move up to the 1992 level on a monthly basis. This may form a TD9 count top between this month here, June and August. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. When we get back from this break, well, we haven't looked at Goldilocks. I don't know if there's any other requests out here. I don't think there is. So why don't we finish the show looking at gold? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the gold, August gold contract, which right now is testing its daily TD9 count breakout level. That's a 23.2270 out there. So truly testing it as we speak. The question is, will that level hold? Because that can be an area of support. <clears throat> well, the bottom signals that are present at the moment on the intraday charts are along the bottom row. 60 minutes is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom at 12 noon. So whatever that low is, and it may take out uh, bar number eight, the low on bar number eight was 23.2250. We're at 23.23 right now. I would watch that low come uh, 12 noon. If price closes below that low at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, that would tell us that price is likely to head lower. But as we come back to a key level of support on the daily time frame, 23.2270, the 60-minute uh, time frame chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. Now, that pattern may, in fact, negate the uh, TD9 count bottom that already formed inside of gold, which came in at 10 o'clock in the morning, or that's the low of the pattern, and that's at 23.2250. Not a surprise there. So watch this close here in the next um, 
uh, four minutes out there, does price get back above that level, then that TD knockout bottom would hold. That would be nice to see that occur. Again, the level watching there, 23, 22, 50. People in the den are trying to understand, is there a potential that gold is about to bottom? The 30 and the 60 minute time frame charts, along with that daily, those will be the key to answering that question for you. So we'll let the market laboratory go ahead and answer that, but at least you know what to be paying attention to there. We'll switch over and take a look at the um, gold, silver on its weekly basis, its uh, daily time frame, along with the GDX. So take a look at the GDX on the right-hand side. Just like gold is getting back to its breakout level, so too for the GDX, 33.74. Just like gold, if it closes below that 23, 22.70 area, we're likely going to head lower. We keep an eye, though, on that 60-minute time frame chart to make that confirmation. So it's possible that both gold and the GDX have pulled back to support levels. With regard to silver, not as easy there. Silver may be taking price back to its level of support, which would be 28.64. Folks, that's it. I'm going to sign off. Give this throat a lot of resting. I'm hoping that when I see you on Monday morning, I'm as healthy as possible. So have a fabulous weekend, and we'll see you on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Take care, and be safe out there.